bring it back. Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So today we've got a bit of a different video with a new game. Um, so this is a very early game called Ostriff. It's um, currently only in Alpha 1, so there's still a lot to be uh, developed on. But so far I've really been enjoying it. So to give you an idea of what the game is about, here's sort of the blurb that the developer's given. It says, Ostriff is a city building game that puts you in the role of a governor of an 18th century town to challenge your creative skills and management abilities. Of which I don't really have either. You can either dive into story mode and decide the fate of your country or just build your cities for fun in sandbox mode. And so far I've been playing for a couple of hours and that really does seem to sum it up quite well. Um, and I think the difference uh, with this game compared to sort of most city building games and uh, sandbox type games is that it's sort of really dynamic and it, it sort of grows much more naturally than um, sort of traditional games. T just to give you an example, the sort of things I've been enjoying, if we just set this off going the most, is things like uh, construction. People have to, you know, they use carts from the centre of the village, they carry them out, they drive them, they pull them round to the building to take a drop off the supplies. Uh, a builder will then use that piece of wood, will carry it into place and hammer it into spot. Rather than, you know, many sort of uh, city building and strategy games like this, where there's normally just a peasant sat in the corner of the building hammering aimlessly and somehow the building just pops out of nowhere. There's also some very cool features, things like you'll see um, roads, you don't place roads, but they actually naturally develop over time. So we've got these sort of hard roads here, like for example the Thatcher, he's using uh, reeds from the pond down here to make his roofing thatch. So because he's so regularly wandering from, from the lake down here, back to his thatching workshop, he's worn a nice thick road, much like this. Uh, the carts have regularly been uh, coming onto this road to access things like the boatyard, the fishery, and the boatyard down here. But these houses, which are pretty newly built, like this one here, uh, and this house, which I've only built um, rather recently, I've only got faint roads where people have only been walking sort of a relatively shallow amount. But these much older houses, this is the first house I built, has got a much sort of thicker, denser road where it's um, you know been trodden for a much longer period of time. So um, I have made a bit of a start. Yeah, as I say, I've been playing for a good couple of hours. Um, I, it, was, it was a bit slow and a bit confusing for me to get started, so I wanted to get started rather than just filming hours and hours of me being confused and sort of me getting started. It's a little bit of a steep uh, start in terms of building. You have to build all the houses to move your peasants out of, uh, out of their tents into property, and that took quite a long time. But to sort of give you an idea of what I've got set up so far, the first thing I built was uh, a forester, and you have to assign workers to uh, each building you, you do. Um, so currently I have 10 men and 10 women, uh, 10 families, and there's 10 houses housing each of these family, and hopefully we'll get some immigrants with the new houses built. Um, but yes, I've assigned one worker currently to work uh, creating wood. I've, uh, I've also built a thatchery, because all of these houses uh, require quite a lot of thatch, as well for a lot of the smaller buildings, like the uh, the fishing hut there requires thatch, and the, the new houses will require hatch, thatch. Um, so I've got a worker working there. So this is taking up workers then, so that's two workers gone already, who then can't be used to do things like building. Also we've got a camp centre with a mayor, he's also, you know, he's also taking up a slot. We've got two small little market stalls down here selling fish. Um, and you can see, instead of building like a fish market store, you can build a market store and you can assign what you wanted to sell. Um, so you can limit supplies of certain goods if you want to preserve them for winter or things like that so they're not always readily accessible if you don't want people to have access to them. But you can see, for example, the fish are on sale here, some basket of fish out, out for sale. Um, I have also constructed a farm down here and decided a field Although I haven't yet built a carpenter's shop, so I can't uh, currently order a plough to work the field. But that's something I'm certainly going to be trying to do this episode. Um, down here, I first I built a fishing dock, thinking, worrying, because uh, my peasants currently have um, stores of potatoes and flour. Which doesn't sound like a, a particularly nice sustenance way to live. And I was worried they're starting to get a bit low, so I panicked and built a fishing dock. Which was great, but... I then realised that uh, <laughs> fishing docks don't come pre-built 
pre-existing with boats. Um, and you actually have to build a boat maker or boat yard to construct fishing boats. Uh, which I then did. As we're seeing as one of the fishermen here is now rowing out into the lake to have access to fishing. Which I think is quite a cool little animation. I like the way that works. I also little subtle little features about this game that I enjoyed when the boat yard was being built. Instead of people just standing on shore uh, building, they actually uh, walked into the water to place sort of the pillars, you know, the the um, I don't know what you call them, the posts, so to base the boat yard out into the sea, rather than just you know sitting on land and hammering away. The workers are actually working in and around the water to build this thing, and that just all sort of adds to their level of immersion in this game. Um, other things I have built, I have got a little clay pit to give access to ooh, clay. And we've got some hay drying racks. So these are jobs, uh, most of the jobs are only workable by men. So all the building jobs like this require labourers, male labourers. But things like manning the market stalls, uh, pumping the water out of the well, and doing things like the hay drying, uh, uh, jobs that the, uh, the women can do. And so you see I'm beginning to build a boat a store of hay. I haven't yet, yet actually got any cattle farms to take advantage of that, but that's something I certainly will do going forwards. So, for now, I think one thing I would like to do is construct a carpentry. Um, this should hopefully then allow me to gain access to uh, nails, uh, not nails, to um, a plough, which is something I would quite like. Um, all buildings, if you don't know, can be rotated with uh, R and T. And it's not just, you know, 90 degree rotation, you can literally set it however you want to. Um, so I'm going to try and place this carpentry around here if I can find a, an area that's sufficiently flat to do it. If what about somewhere like that, I want to, I don't want to destroy this nice little road we've got built up. So we'll place it there, and that should uh, give it nice access to the main road network. I'm going to slowly develop over here onto this little outlet. Uh, that's another thing I wanted to show you about the game. It's probably the sexiest city builder when you start to zoom out. I mean look at this river how it's just it just looks so natural and as you zoom in here I think we start to get some bird noises. <laughs> I just think it looks awesome rather than just you know a straight river it sort of bows we've got little islands developed in the middle as it flows sort of throughout the map and now the city the not city little small villages starting to develop around the river people out on the river on the boats I just think it really creates one of the best looking city building games I've seen so far and you've got to remember this game is only in alpha and it's alpha 1, this is like the very first release uh, available to the public um, and it's only been out well I think it was released uh, a couple of weeks ago um, and I've only had it a couple of days um, so you know there's really a lot of improvement to be going on and so far I mean the choice of buildings I'll just stick this in fast forward so people start to build the carpentry shop a little bit quicker but you know we've got village houses, wells I mean, even just if Alpha 1, the choice of production buildings is quite large. We've got tailors, weavers, uh, farmers, which we're going to get going. Uh, windmills, cow sheds, uh, carpentry, smithies, uh, oil workshops, thatcherers, shoemakers. Such a wide variety of buildings. Um, we've also got uh, trade and transport. So we've got things like uh, the cart park, <laughs> which is where the village stores the village supply of carts is. So if anyone needs a cart they can walk over and grab one from the from the carp store which then they can then use to say uh, move fish from the uh, fisherman's hut and take it over to the market stores and that sort of thing um, things like we've got a government building a town hall something I've not yet built uh, there's decorations in terms of benches uh, little archways and fences and trees you can plant around your village if you want to make it look nice and then up in the future uh, there'll be educational buildings health buildings and religious buildings um, but these haven't yet made it into the game, although I'm pretty sure I saw some uh, pretty good looking pictures of some churches on uh, Twitter. Because uh, the bloke, so far, as far as I'm aware, the bloke developing this is just a one man band. He's done everything on his own over the past couple of years. He's actually, uh, I believe, a Ukrainian bloke. And um, well, he's just done a fantastic job. And um, I, and I would say this is obviously the village seems to be uh, pretty Ukrainian or sort of Eastern European in design, um, based in the 18th century. Oh, so August 1722. Um, so yeah, so that's probably why uh, might expect a bit of slow progress in terms of updates. But 
uh, it seems pretty keen to keep uh, releasing more buildings, more content, and any bug fix fixes as things start to go wrong as well. So hopefully a lot more new content to come. So as you see, since I've been talking, uh, my house has got finished and a family has moved in. So we now have 11 men and 11 women and they've got a two-year-old daughter as well. It's not something that seems to really be used in the game yet, but each family has a wealth. So for example, some of my earlier families who have been here a bit longer are quite a bit more wealthy than some of the new families who have come in. And it is a particularly poor, it's largely because look, the father is currently unemployed. Um, although with the, with the carpentry shop being built that should open up a fair bit of work. Um, I was trying to see maybe if we get an opportunity. Yeah, so they actually carry like the fence panels out to the spot where they're going to be and construct them. See, the man takes it out to the actual spot before placing it. He doesn't just place it somewhere on the building site and then walls start to pop up. They're actually making use of, and you see he's carrying the roof cross section and then placing it there. And it's that sort of little level of detail and immersion that I think makes it so much better than just a lot of the traditional RTS games and strategy games where people just build things out of nowhere. Plus, uh, I really like the building designs. I think they look really cool. I like, like the blacksmith, the little two-story building. I think they look like a really good building. You can see the man that working on his uh, little anvil there in the corner, making some nails for me. Because um, they're a pretty critical component of all the buildings. And I think all the buildings look good, even down to the little things like the hay racks, um, the little uh, hay store, hay barrack there, and the cart park, and the tents. I think they're just a really well modelled buildings, something that really adds a lot to the game. So, once this carpenter shop gets built, like that, I'm going to uh, assign a worker to it. And then, you don't so much tell the carpenter shop to build something, but I'm going to request from the farm, is going to order a plough. But, because I'm not very good at this game and I haven't thought this through properly, of course, a plough also needs oxen to pull it. So just having a carpenter shop hasn't helped me. So, we're going to pop back to the production menu. Um, and I think we're going to want a cow shed then. So, um, since this is sort of the farming part of the village, I guess we'll build a cow shed over here. Try and get that to level up a little bit how I want it. There. So, uh, labourers should now be assigned to this task. See, there's uh, currently five open vacancies. Um, two, two women are looking for jobs, or one woman, because they're unemployed. Um, a lot of the women are employed by things like the market stalls. Um, I'm a bit worried people's food supply is getting rather low. And no one seems to really be buying my fish at market. But maybe they'll just wait to run out of food before they actually take advantage of my wonderful produce on offer. As we're starting to, we've got a reasonable supply of fish, 2.9 fish currently available, so it's not, not too bad. Um, and as you see, look, this road here that originally, when, when we first started this video, was pretty faint. It's slowly getting trodden on more and more by people. Here's uh, someone's daughter, she's only th she looks quite old for a three-year-old. Um, it's slowly walking along the path, and this is what's wearing the path in and making it sort of a, a harder worn. Uh, the fishermen are still out on the lake doing well. So hopefully, yeah, a couple of labourers have been assigned to this job. And they're starting to transport wood over to the site. And making use of the, the village carts. See, and when they're finished, they return them. Although in this case, they're going to the, uh, to the, uh, the, the, the forester to collect more wood. To take it over to the building. And you see they're starting to lay down the foundations of how they want to be. Um, they're having to build like a sort of a bit of a base up because it's on pretty uneven ground. If you look, that's another thing I quite like about this game is the sort of flowing terrain layout, which particularly fits in well with the river, rather than it just being next to a, the river next to a completely flat floodplain. It sort of gradually builds up the terrain. It's really nice, like a little valley down here. I'm not sure if these people are necessarily built, should have built their houses down here. They may well get flooded in heavy rain. Um, also, if we start to fast forward the game a little bit more, we may start to see some of the snow, winter snows, which are quite nice and I quite enjoy as well. Uh, so this building is now well under construction. Uh, it's still waiting on more supplies of wood to finish it off. And then hopefully, when this is constructed, we'll get access to some oxen, which we can then use to order a plough, and uh, all will be well.
Uh, and then this will be a wheat field, which can grow. And then we'll have to build a mill, uh, which same thing. See, so again, as before, people actually carry the blocks of wood over, which they then, you know, the place, the pillars of the building. I just think that's a nice touch. I like that. It's a nice way of constructing things. Uh, so I'm going to fast forward that while they do that, because they take quite a long time sometimes to build the buildings. My poor carpenter, well I'm out of a fire of the carpenter for the moment, since he can't actually do anything, because we can't order uh, a plough until uh, we have oxen available for us. And going into September it's probably not going to be a very good season for it as well. So the well in our centre of our village, it's kind of a nice little counterbalance well there, used by all the village. And then spare people, like the women here are unemployed, um, just sort of sit down in the benches at the centre of the village. Uh, I suspect they're full on hay. So let's build another... Where is it? I'm looking for another hay barrack. There we go. Mm. Like so. So that the production of hay can continue. Particularly now we're going to start building um, a cow shed. It may well be needed for oxen. See, so the building needs clay, so the workers are going down to the clay pit down here um, and digging it out. It does have a sort of a limit to how much clay is available, but considering it started at 10,000 and this is a good couple of hours in, it seems to go down very slowly, so it's not something to worry about too much. Uh, we're getting a pretty good supply of fish still, although still no one seems to have brought any. Ah! So this house, this slightly more wealthy household, has, has invested in some fish. Brilliant. That's what I wanted to see. I was worried that people weren't going to be prepared to buy anything and it was going to cause mass starvation or that sort of thing. But it seems that now once people start to run out of food, they are prepared to invest in fish. They just clearly prefer to eat their potatoes first. So they're just waiting on one more clay at this building. Um, then hopefully they'll start to knock this up a bit quicker. It's probably because it's got sort of a mud clay walls. So that's going on the construction well, we're on full fast forward now. As you can see this, this road is now really starting to develop thicker. In September, I think it's uh, October or November, we should start to see snows developing. Which should be interesting. Uh, campfire, I haven't noticed that before. And obviously, um, so buildings like for example, I've currently only got one worker working in the forestry. Um, and he's got a limit on what he can produce of, you know, say uh, 200 wood, for example. Currently I only have 54 wood. And that's because uh, as one worker, worker is struggling to produce, you know, that much wood very quickly. But if I start to get a sort of a bit of a wood shortage, I can assign up to five workers in this building, which will rapidly increase the rate of production. So, um, you know, just because a building is slow with one worker doesn't mean that's its current speed and you need lots of them. You can just assign more workers to them. But it's just because I only have 11 men in total and, you know, building building works require quite a few people. Um, I think it's just worth having one for them until you actually need it. For example, reed and thatch are both maxed out, so this guy isn't actually doing anything now. Although we'll probably need some uh, reed some thatch for this uh, cow shed once it goes up. So, let's continue in fast forward mode. Hopefully this building will get constructed soon. The walls are slowly going up. Still kind of waiting on clay. Um, I think a few of the labourers have been having a rest, which is why it's kind of slowed down a little bit. Uh, bringing over some more clay for the building. And here's another man with another pot of clay. So hopefully we'll see the rest of the walls coming up. Starting to look a bit better there. Now we also need more wooden nails. That's probably going to be for the roof trusses. There we go. Roof trusses are starting to fly up now. And then we're also probably going to need some thatch. There we go, bringing over more wood. So still are waiting on more wood for this building. Try and give you a nice overview. I also quite like the smoke that you get when people people are in the houses. Nice little bit of smoke wafting out the chimney there. <laughs> it's all just quite nicely done this game. Oh, every, everyone's in their houses now, everyone's got the fire on. Getting a bit colder obviously in October. There we go, they're putting in the cross slats. I think it's perhaps going to be a wooden roofed building rather than a thatched, maybe. 
No, oh, maybe not. There we go. Thatch roof flying up. Um, currently, it's not that I have muted the game music. There is no currently in-game music, or not that I'm aware of. So that's something to note. Um, uh, normally, if I was playing this on my own, I would be running music in the background, but obviously for copyright reasons I can't. So you can do that. Uh, another thing I noticed I wanted to point out, for those of you who uh, play in large monitors or want to play it in 4K, that sort of thing, while it's kind of limited options, uh, sort of a pretty critical option is they've got a UI scaling option. So you can crank that up to 200% if you want to play in 4K or you want to play on a you know 60-inch TV, which I know a lot of people do. I know I certainly do sometimes. And one of the most annoying things often with Alpha games is that they don't have uh, a UI display. And that really sort of limits the accessibility when you you know when buttons are so small that you just can't see them. There we go. So our cow shed is built. So let's assign a worker. Um, how do we get? Oops, no. How do we get any cows? Maybe we have to trade for cows. That's another problem I hadn't considered. So in the meantime, let's establish a trading post. So this is going to be quite a huge building, I think. Well, it is going to be quite a huge building. So we'll build this sort of over here. Or we could build it over here. No, we'll build it over here. Not that way. Rotate a little bit. Like that. So we'll set that off under construction. Uh, we've got a worker assigned to the cow shed, but um, they're moving hay over. But I suspect it's going to be one of these games that's going to make me try and trade for some cows in the first place before I can start to breed them. Um, because there is no uh, livestock available. We use a fallow field if available. Well, there is a fallow field available, but um, with no cows to put in it, that's not a lot of use for them. So, let's get construction on the trading post. Um, I hope you've sort of, uh, I hope you're finding this video helpful. Uh, I might start to bring it to a close here because um, otherwise you're going to have to sit through a of another 10 minutes of uh, waiting for this trading post to be built. I probably am going to do like a, a, a let's play video on this series as we sort of continue to develop this settlement. I sort of made this video with more of an attempt to sort of a review and sort of give a bit of a first look at the game for those who are thinking about buying it or for those who are just interested in what all the fuss is about and I hope I've sort of accomplished that. Um, I'm starting to get a reasonable idea how this game works so if you've got any questions about the game or about whether it will run on your system or if you you know want to know if you should buy it or not and you're still not sure after this video post the comments down below I'll always get back to you and if you like this video please give it a like and if you're really generous um, a subscribe really does help the channel out, out, out as well because I'm obviously I'm only a very small channel and you've got 43 subscribers or something at the time of this video and every time I get a subscribe it really does make my day so I hope you've enjoyed this video guys thanks and I'll see you on the next one